This is Dr. Holt. In this video, I want to solve two problems. The first problem is I have a uniform 4 kilogram rod with a length of 16 meters. It has a frictionless pivot at one end, being right here at this pivot. The rod is released from rest of an angle of 26 degrees beneath the horizontal. What is angular acceleration of the rod immediately after it's released? And then we want to find out what is angular acceleration 40 degrees below the horizontal. When you have a problem like this, we're pr you're pretty much going to use the equation that torque is equal to the moment of rot excuse me the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. To find the torque, I will draw an arrow at the center of mass of the rod coming straight down here, and this will be the force of gravity. And the force of gravity in this case is just going to be the four kilograms times the acceleration of gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared. Now note, the when you're calculating the uh, moment arm, it's going to be the horizontal or the perpendicular distance from the force. So we're looking for this distance here. And this distance here is going to be the 8 meters times the cosine of 26. So I'll set this problem up and calculate the torque first. So the torque, and we'll call this point A, the torque around point A is going to be the distance from the pivot point, which would be 8 meters times the cosine of my 26 degrees, times the force of gravity, which will be 4 kilograms, times 9.8 meters per second squared and that will give me a torque value of 281.86 newton meters. So right now I have this calculated. Now we'll calculate the moment inertia. Since we're going pivoting around this point, we will use the one-third times the mass times the length squared. So the I value about A will equal to one-third the mass of the rod, which will be four kilograms. times its length, which would be 16 meters. We will square that. That will give me a moment of inertia of 341.33 kilograms meters squared. And now we can find our, our angular acceleration by saying that torque is equal to I times angular acceleration. That will give us 200 and 81.86 newton meters is equal to 341.33 kilograms times meters squared times my angular acceleration. We will solve for angular acceleration and we will get a value of 0 0.8258 radians per second squared. And that would be my angular acceleration initially when it's released. Now as this uh, bar falls down to 40 degrees you will notice what's going to happen since this angle here is going to increase this distance here will decrease so my own moment arm will be less. So at 40 degrees my torque at A at 40 degrees we equal to 8 meters times the cosine of 40 degrees times 4 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared and that will reduce my torque to 240.23 meters excuse me newton meters and then now again if I run my angular acceleration using the torque is equal to my moment inertia times my angular acceleration, I will get my angular acceleration of 0.7038 meters, sorry, not meters, radians per second squared. Now notice too that the moment inertia will not change. The angle has no influence whatsoever on the moment inertia. Okay, so that's the first problem. The second problem I want to work is I have a four kilogram rod 
has a length of 16 meters, has a frictionless pivot at one end. The rod is released from rest at an angle of 35 degrees from the vertical. Now at the end of this, I also have a 4 kilogram, it has a radius of 4 kilogram uh, solid sphere, has a radius of 0.8 meters. We want to find what is angular acceleration of the rod system immediately after it's released. All right, so now when you do the torque here, you're going to get two. You're going to get two values. I'm going to have one break it into this part here, and a force coming down here like this. So we need to find these two torque values. Oops, don't mean to do that. So the force of gravity of the rod piece by itself. So the force of gravity of this, we'll call it force of gravity of one is going to equal to 4 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared and this one here will also be the same value force of gravity 2 will equal to 4 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared the, big, the difference between these two would be my moment arms are going to be different so my moment arm for the upper one, for this one here is going to be the perpendicular distance along here, and for this one it's going to be this. So this one, this force of gravity one is going to create a smaller torque. We will go ahead and calculate what the torque values will be. And when I do this from here, my torque values are going to be. We'll do the rod first. It's going to be eight meters because that's the distance from here up to the center of mass times the sine of 35 degrees times 4 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared plus now the distance from this point here up to the center of this is going to be 16 plus the radius, so that'd be 16.8 meters times the sine of 35 degrees times 4 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. That will give me a torque value of 557. 0.61 Newton meters. Now we'll do it with the moment of inertia about this point here. We'll call it point of A. And this is going to make you use the parallel axis theorem. We'll do the rod by itself first. Again, we know that's going to be one third times its mass, which is four kilograms, times its length, which is going to be eight meters squared. plus this piece here we're going to do as if it rotates around its own center of mass and that would be two-fifths four kilograms times 0.8 meters squared again the formula for a solid uniform sphere is going to be two-fifths the mass times the radius squared and now we add the parallel axis to that, which will give us 4 kilograms Oops, you know something, I just made one mistake. Let me come back to this. I apologize. Right there. I should have been 16. Sorry about that. Check, check that. 16 meters squared. I apologize. For I do that, it should have been one-third times the mass times the length squared. Okay, now, back to this. Parallel axis, we do the four kilograms times the distance from the rotational point. In this case, that will be 16 meters plus the point eight meters. And we will square that. That will give me a total moment of inertia of A is equal to 1471.317 kilograms meters squared. Now we can go back and we can use the equation that torque is equal to the moment of inertia times angular acceleration. We'll put the torque in there as 5, 5 
7.61 Newton meters is equal to 1471.317 kilograms meters squared times angular acceleration. We will get the angular acceleration of 0.379 radians per second squared. All right, I hope that video was useful. Again, that's two problems I've solved using the equation that torque is equal to moment inertia times angular acceleration.